Hello and welcome. Welcome to CPR's Clubhouse Live. My name is CPR Jose Ortiz. And um, listen, my bucket list is checked off. I had a top 10 of uh, people that I wanted to interview. And I, I'm, I'm starting hot and heavy in 2023. I got my number one pick, Tony Moran, with us here on CPR's Clubhouse Live. Tony, thank you so much for joining us here. Also with us, we have Willie Valentin. Uh, Willie, thank you so much for making this happen. And, uh, you know, that's what friends are for. You know what I mean? And so... Yeah, um, that clears. No, I'm just yeah, kidding. That check, <laughs> it looks like it bounced a little bit. But, you know, um, I'll send another rubber check to you, sir. Um, so so uh, the reason why we're here is because Tony Moran and Willie Valentin uh, have some great announcements to the, to talk to you in, in the universe out there that loves our genre of music freestyle. Um, I will say right off the bat, that uh, It Must Be You 12-inch version is the greatest 12-inch record of all time. It is a song that makes you happy as soon as you put it on. Uh, there's something about the baby, you know, um, just it's just a, a song that brings me back to 87, 88, and uh, it just brings me back to my childhood. Uh, it's just the essential song of my lifetime. And so I just want to thank you for that before we start the uh, interview and also say that um, I can listen to that song all day uh not only that but there are certain songs right that you you want to just listen to it and just you know get out of the record right um and there are songs that are seven eight nine ten minutes long and you're like i can't give a song 10 minutes especially when you play them on the radio that doesn't happen with the latin rascals or anything with tony moran we want to play the extended version because that's the only version that we're used to so um just so you know we'll never play the radio versions of anything that you produced in freestyle, so uh, we always Thank put you. the extended. Yeah, always the extended. There's so much. There's so much intricacy um, and details in in the production, in the mix, in the break, in everything, and it's just brilliance. And every time that you you put something together, man, it's just like a a story is being told. All right, and we have a continuing story with yeah. how yeah. we layered our creativity and our energy together, and we found it was so easy to find a common ground because we were both at the club, envisioning it and imagining people on the dance floor, not just writing the song and writing the artist, but writing the rhythm. And sometimes when you got something good, you don't need to let it go that fast. And Absolutely. that is the art and design of an extended mix. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk about the history of Willie Valentin and Tony Moran. How do you guys know each other? So 1997, 87? Yeah, late 80s, <laughs> yeah. Um, it's funny. I, I'm probably going to remember more because, to be honest, you know, like I've always said he's like my idol, right? You know, right. when I started doing this music, I was into hip hop. And when I heard the cover girl show me at a club one day, I think it wasn't even the cover girls yet, it was the demo I heard. It was demo. Yep. And that beat, I had to call my best friend and go, hey, we're doing this music. And, um, you know, just being able to grow up to this stuff, you know, simultaneously because I got into it right away and I opened up for Tony a few times. Of course, I was a hundred pounds ago. And, uh, <laughs> La Mirage, you said La Mirage. Yeah, La Mirage. La Mirage, for anybody who doesn't know, La Mirage is one of the le legendary destinations where freestyle music or the art of it was being featured. And so it was really in Bronx that um, that people started to show their receptiveness to it. And, you know, we happened to be there at the same time, like, you know, being involved in it. Yeah. And what else do you remember, Willie, from that night? Uh, well, I mean, I remember the, I was just telling him about the picture I still had from that night. Um, you know, it felt good because I was trying to get where I wanted to be in the music industry and getting to meet Tony was a big accomplishment for me. Right. Because I'm like, I'm opening up for someone I look up, you know, who I admire. Um, and I'll just really quickly, I remember I also did another show in Patterson, New Jersey at a place called Father English Bingo Hall. It was Bettina, Tony, myself, and uh, La Girls. LA Girls. Yeah. 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 In 2022, uh, um, you guys um, were set to uh, collaborate together on a team up, right? And do a song together. 
and it didn't happen. What happened with that special pro project that you guys had set for that that uh, 2022 release? Well, I guess, yeah. So what it was is that at that time, I was trying to uh, plan a series of collaborations. And what happened, we were still going through the post-pandemic thing. And it was very difficult for any, either Willie or myself or the other artists that were involved to try to get a time out to go and release the product because we just couldn't get a release date together because of the, the situation where people buy music. But um, upon my first like reaching out to Willie and trying to get to know him, I really knew that like, you know, this is somebody whose energy that without having to detail it, I felt connected by it. So it's not old school energy. It's not new school energy. It's just good people energy on top of having a great respect for other people's musicality. And, um, and so even though that song didn't wind up getting finished yet, because now I'm in his house, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, yeah. You know, at, at the first opportunity of me working on something new, I immediately, you know, reached out to Willie, which is now fast forwarding into the present. I did ask for permission because, you know, we all have these perceptions of each other. Right. You know, so to me, Willie, again, like the way I, he feels about me, I feel the same way. So I so respect his, the impression that he's leaving in the present in regard to taking something that was from a different time period and making it in present. That's what pop music, commercial music is all about. Right. And and uh, so I remember like, kind of like nervously like texting K7 and saying, hey man, you think it's okay if I call Willie Valentine and ask him about a project? And then, you know, K7, you know, KL responds to me like, of course, silly, you know what I mean? And just, just send it, you know, because, you know, I want what, something that I've created, having so much interest in it, to share it with someone that has the same feel about a musical genre and taste uh, at the same time. That doesn't mean that if he said, I'm not into it, like I would have respected that just as much. Right. But fortunately in my favor, and hopefully in our favor that, you know, wound up being something he was like, yo, let's get this done. Let's put an artistic touch on it. So <laughs> I, I get to speak to him. Uh, Woody Valentine, I get to speak to him all the time. And when he mentioned it, and this is uh, last year uh, during our, you know, our top 10 personal list of 2022, he mentioned it off the air. And I'm like, that's going to be epic. That's going to be something that um, two worlds colliding, um, two people that uh, respect each other. I was going to use that word a few uh, seconds ago, but you used it, Tony. And the fact that you guys go all the way back to La Mirage, and now you guys took separate paths. And now your paths are crossing now um, because of the mutual respect you have for each other and the fact that, um, you know, I can't believe that Tony Moran was scared to call Willie. You know what I mean? But <laughs> that, that that is also a respect thing, you know, so. That's absolutely a respect thing. And, you know, yeah. and, and you also you get anxious, you get excited and you want to be able to share something that you're excited about to someone else that they don't have to respond in an excited manner. But what it is that like you're talking like seriously, head to head face-to-face, heart-to-heart with somebody that appreciates you have a lot of things in common and appreciate, especially musically. And so, yeah, uh, like, man, I just, I've gone to respect him, adore him, got out with his wife to dinner, and his daughter, <laughs> she gave me no attitude, I met the dog, no attitude, I mean, like, you know, does it get any better than this? <laughs> when, when you speak of musically, um, you know, we just had the discussion a couple of days ago, we were listening to the dub version of it must be you and we're just talking about the joy that the song brings you like he's playing it and he's in in uh, connecticut in the studio i'm in massachusetts and i'm watching him on, on tiktok live and he's playing it and i'm like play the extended version I'm like, i don't have that but i have the dub and then the dub gets into part of the extended version and it just makes me smile and we're just talking about how great that production is um and so Thank and you. so when you guys talk about musicality and respect Willie is a student of the game, and of course he studied your your beats. He studied your 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 rhythms and and your your lyrics and all that stuff. So have I, and, and you know I guess that's where the connection all comes from. And I'm so glad that you are collaborating with each other because I can't wait to hear what comes out of this collaboration, this team up. Um, to get back to the team up. Oh, and by the way, Tony, thank you so much for wearing a shirt. I appreciate it. 
Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, thank you. Actually, I borrowed it from Willie. <laughs> so put it on quick. I have all this stuff in my bag. I just was like, oh my god, there's no shirt in here. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, and, and your and your uh, a luggage. I I got a picture of it. It's all jeans. That's it. You know, and there's no oh, shirt. It's all jeans. You, know? yeah, you got a jacket, no shirt. That's, that's how you came out of the the airplane. Couldn't afford airplane. one back then. I just didn't have enough. <laughs> no, I t- it's I'm just all, uh, I'll save uh, up now. I I <laughs> think I've got. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think that um I've gotten so familiar with your your body of work, but actually your body too. Every time that I look at a uh, a cover is like is he ever gonna wear a shirt it's like you and coro are going shirtless in all the different uh pictures i just thought it was hilarious that i got better hair than i do though <laughs> yeah. i just think it's hilarious that you're wearing a shirt now i'm like that's not tony moran prove it you know anyway so uh, so so look um the, this collaboration that you are gonna have now in 2023 what does it consist of what's gonna happen between woody valentine artistic recordings and tony moran so just really quick, like I just want to give a little history on, on, you know, even though it's not a long time ago, but I remember when Tony reached out and I remember he said, I'm going to send the track now. Right. And I'm like driving, you know, I'm like, I'm risking my life. I'm going to, I'm going to download this song. Now, <laughs> listen to the car. Um, you know, so one, one thing I felt was I was excited because I never heard any record that he's worked on that I didn't like. And I was like, I'm, it's a different because he told me it's not the same record we were working on. It's a different record. Like, okay, what is it going to sound like? And I think I called him as soon as the song was done. Like, oh, I texted you. I'm like, love it. That was like right to it. Like, I I wanted the record, um, and not just for me or not just for artistic, but for the fans. Like, this is a record that we need for this for this uh, for this genre of music, right? There's there's some quality records coming out, um, but you know to ha- have someone who's done these great records and still be able to do great records now. It's kind of like show everybody, hey, I know, you know, a lot of people are working on stuff, but this is what we have to, this is the quality, this is the type of record that we need to work on. I'm not saying copy it, but put in that work to get this kind of quality. So that's what excites me that the freestyle fans are going to um, hear a gem of a record. Um, Tony had to miss the beat. I, I even texted him and said, you sound like you're 20 years old. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he did text me that. I thought he was just being nice. It was like a Hallmark commercial. Yeah. Like, you know, but, but but it was so genuine. I reached out to him. And I think all artists, like, you know, we want to have people like our stuff and we're willing to work, work in the direction to do what we love and to have it overlap with what they love as well. And there's nothing better than to have like a true, you know, colleague, you know, listen to something and then also have like the strength to be able to have a Willie to Tony conversation when we're just talking about the song. Can this work for you? Are you feeling it? Uh, I didn't have to demonstrate my technique or my quality or hiccups during the vocal. I'm just saying, hey, man, I wish I could have sung better. Uh, these are the tracks. Let me know what you want 100%. Like, you know, what do you call it when there's, there's like no no boundaries in between? Like, basically being like 100% honest in either way. And then Willie was just like, okay. You know, he said he, he liked it. And I said, well, can I send it to you? And then I sent him everything that I had. And then um, as, a, as a great producer himself, he shared with me how he would like it broken down into how he can express his art into my art. And so I didn't have as much anxiety about singing it. I just felt so good about it. Let me take it from there. Because the only way is up if I feel like I've done something good and I want to make it better. And, you know, and I've called upon a colleague that would look, look at things the same way and then open up my mind to what it is that we can do to make it better together. And so I think that is where we're at today. And I was very excited to see uh, previously, you know, how Willie has, you know, remained committed to the releases that he has with any number of artists and to be and to be in it. And that's that's a lot to swallow when, you know, when people are looking at you to kind of put them in the direction of something. And I was like, let me give you all this in, in my heart and what I'm feeling and us together and then have a common goal. And uh, it doesn't make it better than anybody else's stuff. It just means like, you know, we're in sync, like not the group. 
Yeah. <laughs> but I'm just saying. <laughs> so let, let me ask you about the, the 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 collaboration. So Willie will produce your record, and you're going to sing it, or is it a team up where both of you will be on the same track? So this one here, Tony produced. They did everything on it. I just did some arrangement with Cliff Potts on one mix. We had Tim Schomer arrange his own extended mix as well. Um, and then we have there's a dub that it's almost that it's almost done that I worked on. Um, like I started doing a remix. I'm like, this doesn't need a remix. Why do we need two freestyle mixes on a freestyle record? Absolutely I said, right. let's you know. I know we talked a little bit about uh, what the record. You know, what kind of mixes should we have? And I know Tony had mentioned in past like a dub mix would have been cool. I'm like, let me work on a dub. You know, um, and I think it's going to be a great package for the for the freestyle fans. You know, I know I was a DJ back in the day. And, you know, even when I was singing, but I would still collect music and, you know, try to DJ when I'm not that great. But uh, um, I like different mixes. I love dubs. I love, you know, a drum appella, a perk appella, whatever was out there that was different from the, just the radio mix that you would hear. You know, so I try yeah. to bring that back. And you he know, did that to me. I'm sorry, but he did that to me like in this, it must be you style. When yes. he says, let me work on a dub. And I'm, in the other genres of music that I work in, I work on a dub in such a, it's a different angle. But I could freestyle dubs to me like like working on dubs for It Must Be You or, or even like Dance With Me or whatever. I just cannot share how much fun I had putting that into it. And you actually heard those dub versions in the club back then yes you know you hear people going back and forth and shooting in and out and i think with freestyle records of today i hear like dj white boy and all other other djs going in and dropping them cynthia v and putting another acapella over it and i just i just i just love it so and that's the and that's the art of djing um I, you know i just got a mix today from uh, jesus the juice vasquez who's the founder of our main stage show here in in new england clubhouse dance music and he sent me a mix and it sounds just like what he used to do back then uh, when he was here in New England, uh, putting uh, uh, mix tapes together. And so it, it never ceases to amaze me how people continue to uh, bring forth that same magic of putting dubs together, uh, putting um, other uh, lyrics with the beat of another song and the transition of it. Um, and that's the fun part of the music. That's a fun part of DJing. That's a fun part of listening to a 12 inch record of uh, the question of dance with me. The fact that you want to play all versions, the fact that when you bought it for four eighty nine back in the day, the 12 inch record, you want to play the, the whole side a turn around, play the whole side B, whether it be a per capella, acapella, dub, appella, um, you know, it's just, that's the fun part of our music. And I'm glad that you guys um, feel that that's something that needs to be brought back. And, um, something that you're going to be working on with your next uh, collaboration. Um, you recently, Tony, uh, also produced uh, Don't Call It Love. It was uh, a song with uh, Kay uh, from TKA. Uh, also, and we have, uh, uh, Cynthia and Judy, yeah. Uh, yes. How, how was that uh, process of putting that song together? Because uh, to this day, I, I feel that that song did it get is just due. It was kind of underrated uh, for the time that it was released, and uh, it was a limited release. Yeah, it's just like, so we were all trying to get in basically into a room together and trying to figure out like uh, how to direct it into the community and, you know, get a unified message on it. So I was really happy with the song, but I didn't have a, uh, I didn't have a chance to focus in on the center point, I guess is the best way. So that's why when I did this song and presented it to Willie, I had one frame of mind and one frame of consciousness going into it. And I, I have to say that in a selfish kind of way, I was able just to like try to be the best of me in the case of that. And I produce a lot of artists all the time. And on, on, on that particular song, I felt like I was kind of going in too many directions at the same time. And, and as a producer, I can admit it's not a failure. It's just part of the learning process. And um, and then with with the sound such as freestyle, where it's so coveted to me, it's such an essential part of my history because I couldn't produce anybody else in the future had I not produced a song for the Cover Girls. That was my education was live on the street, and um, and so um, and so on that song, you know, all of those artists that are involved, which is K Seven, Cynthia, and Judy Torres, did a stupendous job on sure. trying to make 
trying to make a song better and giving it all of their own. And then now re introducing myself into this freestyle sound, I was, the beats were in my face and the mic is in my face. And it's like, I don't, I don't have to sell it to yes. myself. I had to wait until he was in his car because you got to be in his car. It's like, you know, <laughs> you wouldn't want anything it previewed any place else. <laughs> that was the, that was the easiest sell because um, I got to speak to him after the conversation. And I was we were two people on the phone, just happy. I was happy because I get to play on all my radio shows, all my podcasts, everything that I do. I get to play this record. And and the fact that he was so excited about it. So I, I can't wait for it. Uh, what is the title of the song, if I may ask? It's, it's called it wouldn't hurt so bad yes. and and um and again it just falls into like tapping into emotions that you know will take you somewhere and it wasn't the intention of the song to write something to be so like longing for something but to, to be honest it's like in my uh growing up as a latino you don't have to be latino but growing up in these supersized versions of emotional sensations that it was a perfect way for me to layer something over a beat that I liked and over music that I liked and the melody just kind of created itself. I just couldn't believe that, you know, when you're singing as a singer on a song that happens to be in this moment in time, like Arabian Nights was, this isn't a perfect range or it must be your perfect range, you know, the perfect beat with the perfect tempo, with the story that works for something that I could channel into it's so special. You could record 20 albums, but it doesn't happen every song, no matter how good you are at what you're doing. And don't worry, I got every single song you've ever made. So um, you could record, you know, record an album with 30 songs. I want them. As a matter of fact, one of my favorites, um, and it's on my top three, is um, Life's Too Short. I think Life's Too Short is one of the greatest of, of all time. Um, it has the best line I think I've ever heard. Uh, Go back to boys. You're not quite ready yet for men. Um, I think that's one of the greatest lines in any song that I've ever heard ever. Um, and uh, speaking of uh, songs, right, let's talk about Lover for a moment. Lover is one of those songs that you can't make in 2023. Um, and and it took a while for me to get all the lyrics of the song, but listening to it now in 2023, uh, what was the thought process of coming up with that specific song? Because um, it's, it's pretty racy. Uh, so uh, so Andy Panda wrote most of the lyrics to that song. And, you know, we were just coming out of this era where, you know, the, the beats that Carlos Barrios was making along with the uh, Melendez and, and also working on it with Corina and stuff like that. I was really channeling that feeling. And it's really Corina with her sexual implication storylines and everything, yes. like with Temptation and songs like that. That was like, you know, Guys could feel like that. You yeah. know? <laughs> and so, you know, and the temptation is a part of life. It doesn't matter if it's wrong or right. And I'm just like, you know what? Like, this is like cutting edge, like talking about feelings that are not necessarily just meant to be about having your heart broken. And so that's when I was discussing this with Andy. And I was like, let's just go there. Let's be in front of the stage. What do you want to tell them? I'll be a lover. Who does it harder? You know what I mean? I was like, okay. <laughs> But then, then it follow, well, what, what, what follows. What follows? Age, but I'm just saying. <laughs> but, but then what follows is get it ready, get it tight, and let's get it wet. You know what I mean? And you're like, wow. I'm I'm that part. <laughs> <laughs> and so you know, and then it starts off with, "Hey, little girl, you look so fine." So people already think wrong. You know what I mean? It doesn't. Uh, they don't go to. It's it's a young woman, and they think it's you know a, another type of song. I always compare it to Stevie B's Young Girl. Like, which one is more controversial? Um, because uh, was that politically incorrect at that time? Yes, to share your yeah. feelings, yeah. and I think Andy Part Andy Panda is such a great uh, songwriter in that he just got into like, what are we trying to express here? And then let's just try to go there, and then from there we could take it back a notch. But yeah. if you don't have the great thing is doing something that you really like and trying to take back a step if you need to. But, you know, I, I, in, in the case of that song, it's just like, just go for it. It's, a, it's, it's just something that will get um, edged into your mind and you could never forget that song. It's something that, you know, if you have the 12 inch record or you have it somewhere, it's a collector's item. Uh, I remember the the pinkish uh, cover with the black lettering. I still have like four copies in my closet here in my 12 inch record. Four more copies than I have. 
<laughs> yeah, listen. If you if you need one, if I find one real nice, I'll send it to you. Um, uh, you also you also recently, um, you know, about six years ago, worked with Todd Terry with uh, Take It All the Way on his uh, compilations that he put out. I remember that the first version was like a dub version, right? It was like just it just says let's take it all the way, and then after. Uh, you added lyrics to it, and it was it was so good. The production was so good, solid. It was amazing stuff. Um, how was it working with Todd Terry uh, putting this this project together? Todd Terry is great, and so I think that you know Willie, Todd, myself, we almost met each other around the same time, like in the late '80s. And so Todd was working in some studios that I was working in, but Todd's way of expressing himself is so unique because he's a man of few words, yes. and he's like Tony. Throw some stuff in there. Like, throw some love in there. It's just just the track. And so Todd Terry, so at that time, like, the whole marketing campaign for Todd was, like, Todd is God. And so, like, this, Todd is God is calling me up and saying, hey, listen to this track, man. Just, you know, throw your asterisk point on it. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I was just so... That's what made me write a song that's called Take It All The Way because I'm realizing like I'm yes. working with Todd's God and uh, he wasn't expecting me to do like a whole full song. And he was doing a tribute to freestyle sounds of him reminiscing. And that was one of the tracks that he sent me. And, you know, Todd is has an amazing level of output and he can like be in his own. It could be house music. It could be all samples or whatever. And he just has a way of focusing on it. I was really happy to have the opportunity with him, but he knows I am very enthusiastic. I'm like, we're taking it away. Hey, Lex, what do you think? What do you think? He's like, there's a, there's oh. a, there's a, a beat, uh, you know, about 16 bars that is repeated a few times in that, in that, in that uh, song that it's just hard hitting, bassy, just some of the best beats I've heard in a long time. It stays on you. It's one of my, it, you know, not for nothing, but Todd Terry doing those two projects are, um, were really um, refreshing for our genre at the time. But also, it it when I was playing it on the radio, it brought back some of the old schoolers back to listening to my radio show, who stopped listening because I play a lot of new music. So it 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 just brought some of the old schoolers back because of the beats, and because it was new music with old beats, and then a new modern twist to it, and it really worked. So I'm hoping that happens here again with this project. Uh, this team up with you, Willie Valentine, Artistic Recordings, Tony Moran, because Willie are there, absolutely. Willie, Willie is the, you know, the number one guy when it comes to new freestyle music. Um, he's been the number one guy since the, you know, nineteen ninety three. Um, you know, putting hip hop into freestyle. Um, you know, putting uh, modern sounds into freestyle. Um, and then you know he he has this he's the tree right and he has branches and out of these branches came other producers other artists other people that were inspired by him where he's part of your tree right because he's a branch from your tree so it's the, this the evolution of our genre of music in, in quality form and that's all I ever want in our genre is to have quality so if you were able it's to it's a cycle uh, it's yeah, a cycle man, it, you, you just pass it on and then people yeah. remix it in their world and it requires all the same tools, techniques, and creativity as if you were doing it from scratch, as if you were rub rubbing two stones together. So if we drop Willie 20,000 years earlier from now, he would still be coming out with the same kind of creative output. And um, and I feel like I would be the same thing. Like it would have to be part of my, it would have to be part of my, my history that I made an effort to try to create things that would s stimulate other, other minds. Yeah. Can, can we talk about the concept of one uh, album compilation for a moment? Listen, yeah. um, so Willie and I and, and my crew are supposed Hold to... Hold on, let me, let me blow off those spider webs for a second. <laughs> 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 so so my, my crew and I and Willie were supposed to get together and do our top five uh, freestyle compilations of all time. And, you know, top three, it has to be the concept of one. Uh, you have the question on there. Um, you have Dance With Me on there. And there's some other gems. Um, you also have um, this one with Christian Decoto. I got the love. Um, I love that song. What an amazing song! Um, it's just um, a song that will always get stuck with you. And it has such a great build up, and then it has you doing the chat in the background. You know the the rap. You know because that that Tony Moran rap that you put on songs, you want to learn the lyrics to it because you want to repeat it. You know so. Um, 
so tell me about the concept of one compilation. What are your thoughts and what do you remember about that compilation? Well, I was going through like, a, you know, trying to reinvestigate like what Tony Moran means along with Lion Rascals. And, you know, Albert and I had already chosen to go and like seek out other music possibilities. And, and so it's kind of like when you're part of a band, you kind of almost feel naked moving forward, like not having whatever is your other half there. And so um, Aldo Marin really stepped up to the plate and he said, hey man, just, just, and Sal Abitello, just like do your own thing, just just do your thing. And, um, and so it was no negativity, it was just really that, you know, you're kind of used to have being part of a component of a group. And so this concept of one opportunity was basically concept of just one person used to being with two people. And, uh, and, um, and, and when I led, um, so well, I, I was with Alda Marin when I recorded like Dance With Me, like, cause I was writing it as we were doing the track. And back then it just seemed a lot, not easier, but it seemed much more organic, not organic, spontaneous, that you knew you were going in there to wreck it. And that was it. That was just the option, right? Yeah. You know, either you're batting 100 or just come back another day. And so along with the question, Aldo like wanted to go and pr proceed to go and do like a mini album project right at the same time. And it was just one of those things before texting that I could just call up Noel and be like, yo, do you want to come down and see what we could work on? And just pulling out pieces of paper and pens and Noel has this really unique way of songwriting where things could just wind up being a little bit artistic. Artistic right in front of me. Yeah. And so he has a different choice of using words, but together. So we would be in the vocal booth together. Just the question that I have to ask since I have the chance to ask after all this. So it was just kind of coming in like, like we were just putting a puzzle together and there was all these words there. And it just kept leading into this question thing, which we thought nobody was going to get. We thought nobody was going to get it. Amazing song. Just one of the best uh, from the cutting catalog. Just the 12 inch record is one of those records you have to just let it play. Uh, put the A side, put the B side, go back to the A side. Uh, cutting record style, here's break. Um, all that great stuff that you put on there. DJs love that record because you can go from one side to the other. If you don't have doubles of of the, the concept of one album, 12 inch records, you're not a real DJ, right? I wish that I would have gotten um, Saving All My Love because I put Saving All My Love on the same level as it must be you when it comes to the production of it because again it just makes me happy when i listen to it it's like here we go go again and then just the beat comes on and then her name was called Zone and all that great stuff i'm sorry i'm a big fan i'm i'm marking out a little bit but um it's just uh, these are the compilations of a lifetime these are the music productions in our genre of music of a lifetime you even got brenda k star on there bks with so in love and that that slow, um, grimy street freestyle with a twist, you know what I mean? Uh, people are like, that's not freestyle. Of course it is. They just slowed it down. They made it better. It, it, the vocals is carrying the beat. It's just it's just amazing work. And um, just want to commend you on that um, because of, of, of me being such a fan. Um, absolutely top five, top three compilations of all time. Um, I only have, it's funny because you both, carry the my top two compilations of all time artistic freestyle parade volume two and the concept of one album i think i'm done right i don't have to do the list anymore um we're done with the list <laughs> uh, but yeah man i um it's just great work a great body of work and i could talk about everything that you've done i can continue talking about it for hours at a time but i do want to get back to this collaboration because this is important for the genre of music going forward um, freestyle has had uh, a resurgence with quality um, and the resurgence of quality will continue with Willie Valentine and Tony Moran in 2023. Um, are you guys just going to do one song together or are you guys going to do more than one? Well, I love working with Willie. So as you said, that he and I had already gotten together to work on something together. And just because of the moments and the time, it was just something that we knew that we would have the opportunity to regroup on. So when I went and had this idea for this song, like the, 
the only person that I reached out to was Willie, because even I am working on some other projects that are in, in the freestyle genre, which I, I really am enjoying, but other people are spearheading that. And in the case of this, it was just what was on my mind. And I just needed as like, you know, like colleague to colleague, be able to share with somebody that was not going to just be he's an artist, producer, songwriter. And so basically I was able to talk to somebody like one-on-one -on -one with only knowing that we share the appreciation for those tools. You know, it's not like a who's on first thing. Right. And so, you know, I think it's a real talent to, to be someone who's a artist, writer, and producer also has his own label that understands that, you know, absorbing artists and titles, it's just more than just inputting the data into a, you know, into a distributor. And so it's a, it's, it's a, it's a commitment as a producer, an artist and writer, not a label that I realize that like, it's an investment that I make with somebody. You're like not investing to make a BFF. You're willing to open yourself up to this. This is not to how I run my house. This is like, if we want to work in the same house and it just wanted to be that we all had so many common grounds and some, yeah, right. so all these same paths. Same I never values. had to read back. And when he let me hear back, when I sent him my rough mix and then he shot back at me, this is like, <laughs> like, like I honestly, I'm surprised I, I can even hear what you're saying right now. My ears are like, not like, you know, still ringing from playing it so loud, like just the appreciation of the fullness of what a freestyle mix down should be about maybe so the way I, so when i first did concept of one i can't even remember how it was on arabian nights or it must be you but i just remember a concept of one like in the question spending all this time on a kick drum and spending time on a snare or a clap everything was important as important as the vocal because it's all one thing and and the evolution you've been there for the entire evolution of the equipment that you use right back in the day was reel to reels and you know you, you it would be this that this huge machine that would cost thousands of dollars and it only sampled for like three seconds. You know what I mean? Like, um, well, and now my, my theory, my, my approach to that, it's not what you got. It's what you do with it. Absolutely. And so there's some people that have made Beastie Boys making an album, just like, you know, with like, you know, two inputs and outputs, maybe, you know, it's just, it's the jam. We're jamming. And I really feel that, you know, of on top of the technique that he possesses and all of and all of the history that he has and the knowledge of music and so on, but he's still breaking it down. Like I want if I could hear this in a club or in my Jeep or in my car exactly. or in my on my AirPods or on just like, you know, twenty dollar pair of well, you can't get buy headphones for twenty dollars in the airport anymore. Not but anymore. if you had a twenty dollar pair version <laughs> of headphones, like it was it would be jamming and that and the the beat would be an important component yeah. of that. So really let me ask you, um, I know you're sitting there, you're taking everything in. How excited are you in a scale of one to 10, to be honest? No, I'm, it's 10, you know. <laughs> um, my approach to this record is like, I'm just, I'm just hey, oh, it's um, it's available. Great if you like it. Can't We can't work a record like that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the, I have plans already in place, DJs that are going to start playing it. Um, you know, trying to get it on much playlists as possible through Spotify. Um, yeah, I think I'll send you a copy too. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna be the first. Um, you know, so creating that buzz, the pre-buzz, right? Mm -hmm. Because this is not a record can, that can be wasted by just putting it out. And I've seen a lot of great records that, you know, I just hear in passing. Oh, this record just came out. And I'm like, it's a great record. What happened? Why didn't they promote it? So I don't want to, I don't want to do that, you know, so I want to create that buzz. Um, you know, I already spoke to some DJs, you know, Tim Schomer, it's part of this record and he's already texting me and Tony, where can I play this? Yeah. He was a real soldier. He was actually like the conduit because I let Tim and, and, uh, <laughs> and him listen to it at the same time. And then, like Tim Schomer, he is as enthusiastic as we are. So yeah. I was like, well, what's this doing? You know? <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um uh, one of my one of my crew members, um uh Cliff Potts is part of the project as well. I'm so excited for him. Um he was asked for by name. So to have um Woody Valentine, Tim Schomer, DJ Cliff Potts all on the same label to me on a Tony Tony Moran record, that's that's uh that's great to me. That's cake. You know what I mean? Um yeah. I have to ask Tony. To 
And so that's why we're in his crib. Yeah. And we just had dinner. And all the things that you were talking about in regards to, you know, to Willie's label mm -hmm. is about like all mark all marketing understood that sometimes face to face, hanging out with each other, being in the spirit of the other person, you could get so much more achieved. And plus we're having a wonderful time, you yes. know, together. And who knows what else, what else what else will come out of artistic? I'm gonna, mm -hmm. I'm gonna let you get back to that. I, I have to ask you one more question, Tony. So you, you are vegetarians. <laughs> <laughs> and do you like long walks in the park, sir? <laughs> uh, so, so listen, you're a superstar in dance music. You're an internationally known DJ. You are the cream of the crop when it comes to dance music. Why freestyle? Why? Why do you come back to your roots? I guess probably it's like you know. You're coming back home and you realize that something that, that that came from that dawned inside of you is something that doesn't fade away of course opportunities come and then you put your expertise and your knowledge and your love and your passion in it but then you when you break it down and say where did this all come from then it came from me being in the microphone with sapphire and mac anthony that day sing right in arabian nights with andy panda and those kind of feelings have you know just resurfaced in this way at the right time and to have a collaborator and uh, to have a, a label and another musician and another singer in the room where honestly I don't have to worry about like explaining it or as Ricky Ricardo would say explaining it I just like we got it and I just feel very blessed that like you, we, we having these opportunities together and again the talent is already there he's already there and his ears were an important component for me to want to revisit this appreciating the art the technique knowledge and the history of freestyle i i love that answer and um, i hope that the cover of the record and the cover of the cd and the cover for the artwork make sure that you don't have a shirt on because it, then it wouldn't like be. He just photoshopped, like he was looking to like bare chested Latino guys yeah. and trying to incorporate that into my tuxedo. What? Well, as long as he doesn't put, he doesn't put tassels and make sure look like the Ultimate Warrior. You're fine. Um, <laughs> so listen, uh, I want to let you guys get back into the studio and create magic. I want to thank you for being part of CPR's Clubhouse Live. Any final thoughts uh, for, from both of you? Well, let's talk about the release date right before we go. <laughs> so. You know, we, we, we bounced around different dates, right? And, um, you know, we, we, we didn't want to rush anything, right? There's other mixes that were fine-tuning, but um, I go back to my first reaction when I heard this record and my first reaction I responded to, I love it, right? What a what better way to, to express that by releasing it on the Day of Love for Valentine's Day, so February 14th. It's like, it just makes total sense. Uh, um, so that's, you know, that's the day we're going to have for pre-order on the 7th. Um, and I, I just can't wait for the freestyle friends to hear this, embrace it, love it, talk about it, share it, you know. Along I, with I, the I, other freestyle artists that are here, still giving the love, still serving it to you, still performing out there to thousands of people with such elegance and grace and with such understanding for their audience. I can't wait to hear it wouldn't hurt so bad. I can't wait to play it. I can't wait to pre-order it because even if I get a promotional copy, I have to have one for myself. If there's if there's mugs, if there's a shirt, if there's a 12 inch record, I want all of it, you know, because um, this is history. Um, so I want to thank you both for being part of CPR's Clubhouse Live. Um, Tony, any last words? Thank you. Um, <laughs> well, I'm excited for the future. And it's just like now that I can put the history and the present and the future all together, regardless of what genre of music, like my energy towards things that I love remains the same. So he says, that, you know, when he's listening to my vocal, I'm just like blushing because he said, you sound like you're 20 years old, but I feel like I'm 20 years old, just, just being involved in this process and sharing with another, another producer artist label that understands the, the, the level of our enthusiasm and dedication toward the craft. Like I said, many quality records out there right now that people who not can just are not just applying their care, but they're applying their knowledge of knowing how to get it right. Your version of that, you know what I mean? And that that's where creativity comes in. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you for for being part of our show, and I also want to thank you for 
creating the um the the quality for creating the the template for quality and so whenever a good quality producer wants to emulate good quality freestyle music they only need to look at tony moran latin rascals um willie valentine artistic recording <laughs> How about the check for me, sir? Is that one going to bounce? Because we traded checks, sir. I know. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, listen, uh, until next time, it's CPR saying goodbye, and thank you for joining us for CPR's Clubhouse Live. As we say, goodbye to Willie Valentin and, of course, Tony Moran. Uh, don't forget, thank February so 7th. Thank you all the fans, and thank you for putting this on the show. Much appreciated. Anytime. And February 7th is the pre-order for It Wouldn't Hurt So Bad, and the release date, you heard it here, is going to be on Valentine's Day. February 14th, 2023. Until next time, it's CPR saying goodbye. And remember, it's not who you love, it's how. We'll talk to you soon.